Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making two more alternatives using the January 2021 paper pumpkin kit. I hope you'll stick around and see the fun fold cards I'm going to be creating today. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Although I love the layout exactly as it came in this month's paper pumpkin kit, over the past few days, I have been sharing some alternative ways to use the kit contents. Up on the screen now is a look at the cards from the three different days that I have created. On the left, I created a couple clear cards. In the middle, I created some slimline cards. I just extended those and made them taller. And on the right, yesterday, I created some clean and simple valentines. If you want to see any of these videos, I do have each of them linked below as well as my January 2021 playlist. Sometimes when Paper Pumpkin sends the pre-printed card bases, the front will be the pattern and the back is a solid color. But this month, the pattern stretches all the way across the card, so I thought this would be a great base to turn into a Z-fold card. If you've never heard of a Z-fold card before, as I work on the process, you're going to see exactly how easy these types of cards are to create. I will be pretty much sticking to the kit contents today. I may need to bring in some white cardstock scraps from my stash, and I brought in the leftover scraps from yesterday's cards. If I do add any other products or tools as I'm going through the process, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be stamping the pieces exactly as the instructions give for this month. Now I have already done that once on my first alternative, so I won't bore you with too much of the details while I do that. I thought we could have a little chat before we start the rest of the process. Up on the screen now is a look at how I store my paper pumpkin stamp sets once I have used the contents of the kits. I find these very economical envelopes on Amazon, print off the sheet that shows what's in each stamp for the month, and this is provided by Paper Pumpkin, and then each of these envelopes get stored in a little bin here in my craft room. If you're interested in finding out more about my storage, I will link that video in the description box below. And speaking of storage, I could use your help, which brings me to this video's QOTV or question of the video. In the last few videos, I have been posing a question to you to just kind of learn about each other, but today I would like some feedback and some ideas. I have recently rearranged my craft area and I am trying to figure out how to store my stamps. Now I already have very handy bins that fit in my IKEA system, so that's not the issue. But what I want to know is do you store your stamps alphabetically by manufacturer or do you store them by occasion, you know, like birthdays, um, love, etc. Let me know in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I'll know that you want to help me out with today's predicament. And now let's get on to the rest of the process. Once everything was stamped, I made my Z fold card bases. Now I'm going to show you a couple different ways here. The first is using a scoring tool. And what I'm going to do is score two and one eighth inches from the left edge. That is going to score the front of this piece in half. Once I have that score line, I'm going to fold that back and then fold the center score that was already there by stamping up. 
and you'll see then when I open it I have a little Z fold and the pattern covers the inside and the front of the card. Now if you don't have a scoring tool you can definitely do this by hand. I did go ahead and pull in my trimmer just so I had a little ledge but I folded the card in half like it was already scored. Well actually so the patterns on the inside and then I fold back that front flap just with my hands. Now I do go ahead and reinforce those folds with the bone folder but you could always just use your fingernails. I went ahead and left my trimmer out so that I could make some mats for my focal points. I will be using the scraps left over from yesterday and on this first card on the heart I am going to go ahead and add that scallop strip before I measure it for my mat. So once that's in place at the bottom, I take the measurements and I cut it so each side is a quarter of an inch longer. For the mailbox card, I'm not going to add the scallop strip first. I just measured the card at the size that it was originally and then cut the red pattern paper a quarter of an inch larger on both sides. Once those mats were ready, I brought in a piece of white cardstock from my stash and I cut this into two pieces that are the same size of the pattern pieces I just cut. These will go on the inside of the cards for my personal message. Now that all of the pieces are ready, we can start putting our cards together. The first thing I'm going to do is map my mailbox with the red pattern paper, and then I add the black scallop strip to the right side behind the red pattern paper, and I just make sure that it is aligned with the area of the mailbox card so it doesn't fill that red pattern paper from top to bottom completely. Then I add that little piece of white cardstock I just cut to the inside center of the Z Fold card base. Before I put that focal point onto the card, I am going to embellish it a little bit, pretty much following the layout and the instructions from the paper pumpkin kit. I make a little bow out of the black ribbon from the kit and add that to the right side of the mailbox. Once I have that down, I bring in the mini dimensionals and I add two to the back of my sentiment label and place this so it overlaps that bow. Now I need to get it put on the card front, but because it does overhang to the inside, I need to make sure that I don't add adhesive on the back completely. So you'll see there, I placed the card where I wanted it, turned it over, made a little mark with my fingernail, and then added adhesive only to the left side of the card. Once that was in place, I added one of the enamel hearts to the envelope in the mailbox, and here's a look at the finished card. Now we can decorate the second card. Before I mat the heart piece with the pink pattern paper, I did wrap some ribbon around it and then I tied a bow to the right side of the heart. You might have noticed I put some adhesive on the back of this piece and that was just to help me keep that ribbon in place while I did this. Once I have my bow adjusted, which let me tell you bows always seem to take me longer than it should, I add this piece to that striped pattern paper. Just like the first card, once I have the focal point complete, I put my piece of white cardstock for my personal message centered on the inside. Now I'm going to add adhesive to the back of my focal point and you'll see that I took the time to make the mark and then I ended up putting the adhesive on the wrong side of the card. But with my ATG, you can just roll that off with your fingers if you ever adhesive something by accident. Luckily, try number two was much more successful and I was able to get my heart card placed on the front of the card base. To finish this card off, I added the little stamped U to the front of the card with dimensionals and I made sure to put those on either end so it would fit over my bow and then I adhered the word love just flat down onto that heart. I did arrange my enamel hearts on this card a little bit differently than the original instructions. Instead of putting 
all three overlapping hearts on the stamped area. I just place three sprinkled around the card. That way when you open the inside, you can see some of those hearts. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's two quick and easy Z Fold cards using the January 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget if you want to see more alternatives as well as other card making videos to click on that subscribe button below if you haven't already. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.